Welcome to Supixel Training and Coaching. My name is Steve Huang. In this video, you are going to learn the fourth argument of the XLOOKUP function. When XLOOKUP does not find a match, what will happen as a result? And what option do you have to decide that result? You can download the training Excel file from the link in the description below, so you can practice along while watching this video. This is the third video in the XLOOKUP Inside Out series. If you haven't watched the previous videos, you may want to go back to start from the first one. Now, let's get into the Excel spreadsheet. If you are practicing online with the downloaded Excel file, the file we're using is SuperExcel 3 XLOOKUP IF MATCH NOT FOUND. Here we have this table with sales records, customer bought from us on the different dates, for so many cases in dollar amount, and we wish to get the physical number of those dates. On the left side, I have a small table with those dates and the corresponding physical week on the side. So we have those January and February in the year 2020 dates along with the physical week on the side. From previous two lessons, you have learned this can be done with an X lookup function. We can look for the dates from the dates range over here and then return the corresponding week number over here. So now let me draw this on my screen to show you how this XLOOKUP will look like. Let me create a copy of this sheet and I will get rid of this button. Now I'm going to draw this formula on my screen. In this cell over here, we need to do an XLOOKUP function and XLOOKUP function could have six argument but we don't have to have all six arguments depending on your objective or circumstance you may decide how many you need the last three they're optional you don't have to have that so as we have learned in the previous two lessons we didn't do the last three let's don't do them for now let's have only the first three arguments with that this formula we need to look for the date over here so the first argument will be that date. Why do you look for the date? Because the date will tell you which physical week that date falls under. That's why we're looking for the date in the first argument. And then the second argument will be the range you're looking within. And those dates, they're in column B over here. So my second argument will be all the dates in column B. I'm only drawing this small rectangle, but the actual range will be going all the way down to include all those dates in that table. XLOOKUP will look for that first argument value within second argument range. Once find the match, it's going to return the corresponding cell value in the third argument range. And we are trying to return the weak number, so the third argument will be those weak number in column C over here. So having that, this extra cup will be looking for January 5th, 2020 in the second argument range over here to find that January 5th, 2020. Once being found over here, then it's going to return the cell value in the third argument range in the same position. So that'd be this over here. So in this join over here, once we find the match over here somewhere, it's going to return the cell value in the third argument range in the same position. And that's how the XLOOKUP works when you have only first three arguments. But when you omit the fourth, fifth, sixth arguments, the XLOOKUP actually assumes certain parameters. It assumes the order you're looking will be from first to last, or top to bottom, or left to right. And your match type is exact match. And it also assumes when that match is not being found in the second argument range, it's going to return to you an A as a result. So when the first argument value is not being matched in the second argument range, then this XLOOKUP will give you an A as a result. Now let's go back to the sheet to do this formula. Let's see what will happen. In this cell, J11 equals sign XL now this XLOOKUP is only one in this autocomplete list over here. I can now press tab to insert the function. So tab. 
and then my first argument will be this date over here in the F11. I will use my left arrow key to go to the cell F11, then comma to finalize the first argument. The second argument will be the range you are looking within, which will be those dates in column B. Let me use my left arrow key to go to column B, arriving at B11. Then I need to select the range all the way down. So I will use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control Shift arrow down. That will select all those dates. I will lock that absolute with F4. So press F4, that locks that absolute. I'll have a comma to finalize the second argument range. Now, the third argument will be the range to return the corresponding value. We are trying to return the weak number, and weak number is in this column C over here. Let me use my left arrow key to go to column C, arriving at C11. Then I need to select the range all the way down. Again, with keep shortcut, I will hold down Control, Shift, arrow down. Now I select all those weak number. I want to lock that absolute too, so I press F4 one time. Now that's been locked absolute. For now, I'm going to omit the fourth, fifth, sixth argument. So I will close with a bracket and enter. I get a 12. That means this XLOOKUP did find that January 5th, 2020 in this range over here, which happened to be the first one, and then return in the first cell in the third argument range, which is 12. So this is all fine. Now, if I copy the formula down, now to copy the formula, I'm going to use a double click. To do this, you have to first make sure you select the cell having the formula, and then move your cursor to the bottom right corner when the cursor changes to solid cross. So the cursor is not like that. It's not like this either. The cursor has to be like this as a solid cross. Then you double click. That will copy the formula all the way down. So now, for most of those, we have found those dates and return the corresponding weak number over here. So we have 6,560 records. For most of those, we did find their date and return the physical weak number. But now we do have two R and A. And you understand from what we said earlier, when we get an A from the X lookup, it's because this first argument value is not being matched in the second argument range. And we are omitting the fourth, fifth, sixth argument. So when those are being omitted, and when this match is not being found, we are going to get an A. That means in this formula over here, the date we're looking for, which is January 7, 2025, that match not being found in the second argument range. Here we have only the year 2020, January and February dates over here. Long those are in the year 2025. So we're not finding the match, that's why we're getting an A. And for this one too, we're getting an A is because that date, May 14th, 2022, is not being found in that range. We're getting an A as a result. Now, you may not like to have this an A being returned when the match not being found. You may wish this function to give you some other value, number, or text, like maybe return a text saying not in the list, rather than give you an A. You do have the option with the XLOOKUP function. Let me go back to my drawing over here. We understand if you have only three arguments, by omitting the other three arguments, it's assuming when the match is not being found, the XLOOKUP will give you an A. But now, we are going to introduce the fourth argument. If you have the fourth argument over here, the fourth argument value is the value will be returned if the first argument value is not being matched in the second argument range. So if you don't have anything in the fourth argument, if you omit the fourth argument, it assumes when the first argument value is not being matched in the second argument range, then it's going to give you an A as a result. If you don't like to return an A, you want to return something else, then you can add the fourth argument. You decide whatever you wish to return over here when that first argument value is not being found in the second argument range. And this value over here can be anything. Can be a text, text will be always in double quotes, can be a number, 
or can be any other function, can be all other xlookup, can be all other f function, any other function combinations. So you have option to return whatever you like by putting certain text or number or function or nested formula in the fourth argument of the xlookup function. So now let me go back to the formula we did. We don't like to return an A. I want to return not in list when the match not being found. Then I will go back to my formula to add a fourth argument with the text not in list. So double quotes, not in list, double quotes. With that, you don't see any difference for the first one because the first one would define the match of that January 5th, 2020. So we did get that 12 as a result. So there's no difference. But now if I copy the formula down, you notice for the two, we got an A previously. Now, because we have the fourth argument, it's not giving me an A anymore. Instead, it's giving me this not in list. So you can have a number over here or text over here or other formula over here you decide what you wish to return. And this is quite an improvement compared to the old VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP. Because with the old VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP, when the match not being found, you will just get an A. You have no other option, no other choices. But now with XLOOKUP, that will give you the choice to decide what to return when the match not being found. Again, to recap, when the fourth argument is being omitted, and when the first argument value is not being matched in the second argument, XLOOKUP will give you an A as a result. If you don't like to return an A, then you can have the fourth argument value over here. So that value will be returned if the first argument value is not being matched in the second argument range. And you can return any number, any text, or any other nested formula combination, or even all other x lookup function inside the fourth argument of the x lookup function. I hope by now you have gained good understanding about the fourth argument of the x lookup function. I mentioned that you could have anything in the fourth argument, including all other x lookup function. I did not go into any detail about that, but when you have troublesome data or complex scenario, it might be necessary to do that. I'm curious to see if you're interested in learning more about that. If you are, please write a comment below. If there are lots of interest, I may do a lot of video to show you when and where to nest one XLOOKUP in the fourth argument of all other XLOOKUP. If you find this video beneficial, please like this video and subscribe to my channel so you can learn more. In the fourth video of the XLOOKUP Inside Out series, you are going to learn the fifth argument. So far, when we did the XLOOKUP, it has always been matching exactly. But in real life, you don't always match exactly. Sometimes you want to match partially. And that's where the wildcard character match type comes in in the fifth argument. And I look forward to seeing you in the fourth lesson to go over that. Thank you.